Okay, so well, thank you for being here. And uh, right after lunch, I know it's a, it's a hard one. Um, so this is joint work with uh, Sumitro Chatterjee, who is now at John Hopkins. He was my former colleague at Penn State. And uh, Tatiana Kleinenberg, uh, she's just joined us from the World Bank. And Kan Kuno is a fantastic uh, fifth year graduate student at Penn State. Um, as the title itself reveal, well, we are interested on uh, uh, regional convergence, and in this case, we are talking about when we say global, because we mean actually we are trying to think about what's going on um, in terms of regional convergence around the world. And I'll try to point out in red uh, things that perhaps uh, um, uh, we know that are already known in the literature, and in blue um, some questions we we have and we are trying to uh, look at. It. Uh, so, first of all, what we know in terms of uh, convergence, original convergence, is that it's, qu it's been quite debated, uh, um, you know, like uh, from several papers uh, uh, in the last uh, decades of what, what was the patterns of convergence. And what seems to be um, uh, what we have converged so far, it has been consensus at least, is that uh, uh, in the last 30 years, there has been uh, um, economic convergence between countries, at least. What we didn't have before, we seem to have uh, nowadays. Overall, poorer nations seem to be uh, to to have been catching up with more uh, uh, with richer affluent nations. What is less known is like there is some sparse evidence of what's going on within countries. We know that within countries there is a lot of heterogeneity. Um, there is some evidence for some countries that. Mm, uh, of, you know, like um, what's going on in the US, there actually has been a lack of convergence uh, in the last decades and some evidence for the UK. So what we are really interested in this paper is really understanding, uh, you know, what is the evolution of convergence within countries. So we know that in the US there was convergence and now there is no more convergence. And eventually, like, is this the US just, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, like a case study in and by itself or something just, just more broad? It, it, is this a broader feature of the world? Is this a broader feature of countries in the world? And if so, what is this re related with and how can it be explained? Or another question is, is basically, is economic growth concentrated in a few regions? You know, like, it's quite different. Okay, yes, India and China are catching up with the US, but is it all India and China that are catching up with the US? Or is it just, uh, um, you know, a few cities of India and China that are catching up uh, with the US, with New York, and so on and so forth? And so that's a little bit what we are after. That, that changes completely the story of the natural growth, right? Um, and second, um, you know, once we give a look at this, that the, I mean, why the, the, I guess the paper is in this section is because we are trying to think about the role of structural change in understanding these patterns of regional convergence. Uh, first of all, this, uh, while we have been working on this for several years, this is still relatively uh, preliminary, so any feedback is extremely welcome. It's a big data collection effort, so we are still in the process of uh, retrieving more information, so please, um, we are very happy to, uh, to get more uh, from you. Uh, so, but what do we have so far? Uh, so basically, a uh, big part of this is actually uh, creating a data set, um, you know, of subnational uh, GDP and uh, sectoral composition, among other variables, but this is kind of like our, our key variables. Effectively, what you want is that you want for, you know, as many countries possible in the world to have over time, um, a time series and a, a time series, but also a cross section within countries by region of all these in, in variables we are interested in, right? in particular GDP, population, sectoral composition. And um, I'll tell you more about what we have so far and what we're working on on uh, uh, getting more. Um, but what we are kind of comfortable, um, we're quite comfortable to have established, I think, fact one, uh, which is basically uh, that we observe that. Um, within, com within country convergence has actually stalled for the average country, okay? This is for the average country. Of course, there is some, I'll show you some heterogeneity, but on average, that seems uh, what is going on. But effectively, then the second fact I think we're also quite comfortable with is what we see is that there is a bite for the role of structural change towards services in understanding why this stall might be happening. Okay, and uh, something that is we I think we still need some data refinement, but uh, a third fact which seems where the data we have right now are pointing to is that 
service employment, and here I put service in a very broad scheme, but effectively we're talking more about high professional services, some type of service, are uh, specially concentrated. And if you put these three facts together, which seem sort of, which seem relatively, you know, like uh, uh, relatively basic, effectively you can explain uh, with a simple theory. Um, of special, uh, of a, with a special model of structural change, how we can go in, from a world in which we actually we won't have, we don't have so much convergence to actually a world in which we we have convergence, and effectively, you know, just the shifting away from, um, you know, agriculture, ser agriculture sector, which is based more on a subsistence level. To, um, um, a, a ser a sec to a service sector, which is actually uh, might have some, you know, like stronger concentration forces. Actually, this might um, might explain uh, uh, some of this uh, um, stolly regional convergence. So, uh, in terms of literature, I'm going very quickly about this. But effectively, as I was mentioning before, there are some uh, there is some evidence about what was going on, what has going on has been going on in the U.S. Why I've been seeing less of this uh, regional convergence in the U.S. and and some explanation of why this might happen, right? But effectively, we are trying to understand, you know, like uh, what we are trying to bring to the table is, you know, like. Uh, how much of this is uh, is generalizable, and for this we we need, uh, and um, of course you know like there might be several several forces going on at the same time. Is there some unifying force that can explain some bite you know all of this story for many of these countries? And for this we need uh, um, uh, this uh, large data set. And, uh, and second, I mean clearly we are not the first to uh, relate. Uh, Structural change and space. You know, there were other papers already this morning, but effectively others in the literature. I'm just citing some here. Uh, we are highlighting again this. What we are highlighting here is this role of uh, of the service sector for this uh, spatial inequality. And but there is a what we what we like to highlight is is this sort of uh, feedback effect, in the sense that uh, uh, there seems to be a feedback effect between growth and spatial inequality. Why? Because the more we are observing these concentrations, if, if the economy shifts toward a more service-based economy, and this service-based economy is more concentrated in, in a few cities, if these few cities are, agglomer there are agglomeration forces, this might be an engine for growth. At the same time, it actually pushes even the service sector even further, right? Because more people will want to work in that sector and will move, want to move to these cities. And eventually, the economy will, there will be a faster Structural transformation towards services with a faster growth, and you know we might at the expenses of this uh, lack of convergence of this higher inequality. So there is a little bit of uh, this tension. I'll hope to uh, show you more about this. But when you talk about structural change, there are very different kinds of services, right? In terms of tradability. So when you when we talk about think about consumption, since you know over the medium term, maybe more about goods versus restaurants and other things, which are non tradable so I'll, here I want to think more about professional services and financial services and things like that, which are highly tradable and probably have a strong agglomeration effects. Yeah, so I mean, the way we are thinking about this is like we are thinking about uh, oh, some, uh, the, the model again is quite stylized, just wants to make a point, but uh, effectively we are thinking about the service sector, which is local, and as you know, like everywhere might have some, there are some uh, positive uh, externality from working in services. And you might, people might move, uh, might change, uh, might change sector, might change, uh, um, might change location, but effectively the, the sector is, uh, um, is local. Okay. I, I, you can, you know, you can divide and do, um, we are planning to work to do this, depending on the data we get now, but to do extensions in which you will have, you know, a more tradable uh, service sector divided by the non-tradable ones, so professional versus non-professional. Effectively, that, you know, might be more quantifiable, but the, the mechanism in and by itself will be st still embedded uh, in, uh, in this. But the services are consumed locally also? Service, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, um, 
Yes, yeah, so I mean, here we are not uh, um, really making a huge point to be to, of um, rural vers uh, versus urban. At the same time, you know, like you may think that uh, if you uh, you give like, like bigger bigger regions or like uh, richer regions, um, we have data actually by cities and state level. So it's not necessarily like rural versus urban. Of course, it, it has a part um, in it. It's for the US. In the U.S., there has been some of this uh, decomposition. Right? But it's, it doesn't seem to be driven all just uh, uh, by that. Okay, so let me go to a little bit the, uh, the boring part, uh, but uh, it has to be done given the, the type of paper it is. Um, and you know, like something that to, the, the final objective of this, uh, this paper is also to provide the public good in the sense of providing a data set, which is basically a time series uh, spanning uh, from a, a balanced panel from 1980 onward of, you know, like uh, countries, regions within countries, uh, with information about, um, where by region, sorry, we have units of measure are states uh, or, or cities, and with information, you know, about for the, the main one in this case is uh, GDP, uh, but we'll have uh, uh, employment, uh, employment by sector, and so on and so forth, but we'll have more. Um, we also have an unbalanced, for now we have 34 countries. Um, we have an unbalanced panel also from 1960. Effectively, for the exercise we are doing, we're mostly using the balanced panel, uh, but some of these can, you know, it's good to also to have the unbalanced one. Um, because, you know, like when we go and uh, uh, some of this exercise actually going to the, to the statistical agencies country by country and asking, of course, when you go and you want to, um, it, this is harder for developing countries, especially if we were lacking most of the data for Africa for most of the African countries. And so we realized that The Economist um, had this uh, city level data, um, which we actually purchased at some point, and uh, it, it has 19 African countries, but only spanning from 2004 onward. This actually still helps us, you know, we, at least we can look at the last period and see if it's uh, consistent with what we have uh, for the rest. Now we are actually uh, working uh, with Tatiana at the World Bank, and we, I think we, are actually, we will also have more of the African countries on the main, on the main data set. Um, how, how we are basically constructing these measures, so uh, we are not the first to uh, attempting uh, to this exercise of creating uh, uh, this large panel. Um, it's actually it's also been done uh, previously by Jenna Yoli and others in uh, 2012, and uh, we actually we are uh, following some of their, of their approach and uh, basically like, uh, you know, uh, start by collecting this uh, GDP data in current prices. Um, population, employment, and we're starting from their data set, which stops in 2010, as all the countries independently if they could create a panel or not. And we're actually going back to the you know, national statistics, IPAMS, Eurostat, OECD. And uh, the idea is basically like uh, we, what we do, uh, you know, like uh, eventually we, we do some exercise also to scale the GDP and the population. Um, to, to match the aggregate. Eventually, our GDP data are in 2017 international dollars, and also we have this population from the um, uh, world development indicators. Uh, just to tell, to tell you, you know, like uh, how representative our data set is, uh, effectively, in terms of GDP, we are covering about 80% of the world. Of course, we are covering very well uh, North America, we are covering well uh, Europe, um, we also seem to be covering well Africa and South America, both in terms of uh, population um, uh, and GDP. We, again, we are, this is still like a, a work in progress and hopefully to get more of the, on this. Uh, we do some, you know, uh, just like uh, uh, interpolation robustness, whatever. Basically, 
we just one thing is like we only keep countries in our data sets if they have at least uh, a, a cross section in for for each decade between you know they need to have at least 1980 1990 2000 2010 2015 once they have at least one cross section uh, one cross section uh, every 10 years we'll keep them in our sample otherwise we we throw them away and we do interpolation in the year in between and so this is just an exercise to check whether you know our final data set interpolated matches the uh, the aggregate uh, uh, gdp from the penwar tables uh, as I was mentioning before, um, you know, like we, our data set doesn't barely covers Africa, uh, if not at all. And so with our city level GDP uh, uh, from the economists also seem to be um, uh, covering part of Africa. And, um, and also uh, when we look at how we do in terms of sectoral employment, we actually, you know, like that was for GDP, but also uh, one of the main objectives here is also to have data for sectoral employment. And uh, again, here uh, we, we, we have the same type of panel a panel cross-sectional approach, and we still have 22 countries and ab about uh, a little bit short of 500 regions. Um, again, with, with this, we go and, uh, you know, like we also uh, go and do robustness with nightlights data that people are widely using nowadays and so on and so forth. What we are working on uh, right now is also trying to get as much as we can about uh, uh, regional prices, which is actually a very hard, uh, these are very hard data to get. Some countries uh, have it and there are some ways to construct it, or at least real GDP, uh, of wherever we can, because of course, you know, uh, there may be, uh, we know there is a lot of price uh, dispersion, even within countries, and we want to understand, you know, like part, if part of the story is being driven um, by that. Yes. Curious, why do you have such a low coverage for Europe against the Korean? Because the so. Say again. You don't have Russia. <laughs> no, no, we don't. Uh, but no, that's not the only country we don't have. So the thing is that here, in some sense, we are quite restrictive. Because our main restriction is that we, 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 we only keep countries if they have both cross-sectional and panel dimension, right? So there are several countries that might have some data uh, in some point in time. But effectively, if we want to you know, see the evolution of this, for them to be part of our data set that we're going to use for this exercise, they need to have uh, uh, the panel dimension too. If I can give you the, um, I, I, uh, if I show you this table for the unbalanced data set, uh, we have much more. But the fact that we were more interested in the balanced part. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's the regional part. Yeah, yeah. Of course, if you if you wanted to aggregate data over time, uh, the by sectors, by sector that, that's plenty. Yes. So for North America, you cover 100 percent of GDP, but in the of the population, so is that 10 percent that don't contribute to GDP? No, no, no. I, I think it's like uh, I mean, I think North America is uh, uh, Mexico, Canada, uh, US. And probably something minor that, that we are considering here that I'm now forgetting. And I guess that, that doesn't cons like uh, almost contribute uh, at all to the GDP, but a little bit to the population. OK. So how are we uh, going to uh, think about our uh, stall in uh, um, within country convergence? So. In fact, I've been talking about convergence until now without giving you a definition uh, of, of what it is for us. And yes, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, for effectively, what we want here is so basically like uh, we, we are going to. Uh, this is uh, how we measure our regional convergence, and so if here every C, uh, like uh, I mean. Uh, um, for each country, we are going to run a regression over time, okay? And the, each point is going to be S, either a state or a province, 
or cities, wherever we have we have this data for. And basically, we are going to look at uh, um, as our independent variable the growth in the CD in the GDP per capita over the, the full time period, and we are going to regress it on the log of the initial GDP uh, log of the GDP per capita, right? Our key estimate of interest is going to be that uh, uh, beta, which is actually the speed of convergence, known as the speed of convergence. Um, what's going to be, uh, you know, like that's going to, we're going to have one, one of these beta C uh, uh, each time we run that regression for each country. Um, we're, for us, the uh, within country convergence rate average, we're just going to, just, we're going to, of course, do several robustness, but just the pure, the pure average by number of countries that you have, okay? And uh, um, our first question is you now, like, is this within convergence uh, uh, on average uh, smaller than zero or not? We could have done this in alternative ways. We could have put all the countries together and then run put country fixed effect. We did that too. The, the reason we are showing this, we think of this as a, a le the least parametric way uh, to, uh, to run this regression. So what I'm gonna, what I'm plotting here is basically this uh, beta c uh, um, uh, hat, no, uh, hat um, over time, right? And what you see is that we, that's like a, these are um, uh, uh, ten years rolling windows, okay? So basically, you're going from where on an average. Uh, for these 34 countries of an average of like uh, this uh, uh, beta convergence between uh, this is uh, like 1.7 percent to basically uh, going to be relatively uh, approximating to be zero and to not to be statistically significant of it overall. So it seems that, you know, we are shifting from a, a higher convergence uh, on a within country world to a less one. If and this is just like where we are, we are unwa uh, These are, these are. Don't you somewhat expect that once you have converged? I mean, yes. Or any model such as the speed of convergence is falling or not? I mean, I know it, it's constant if you make an approximation, but if you don't, it may be falling over time, uh, just because of inadequate conditions, whatever. Of course, yeah. No, so of course, that could, like... be, that could capture this. No? Uh, it could have captured this. Um, I'm, I hope to tell you that, like, that's not necessarily the case. In the sense that, you know, we we haven't we aren't done uh, with uh, with catch up, and still, like, we are not <laughs> uh, catching up. There could be, there, there, there's still room uh, for catch up, and uh, effectively, I'm gonna show you that even here, you know, like when you do un uh, even weighted by population, it's kind of like almost, uh, you know, to some extent, not catch up at all. And to some extent, there is even some degree of divergence. So this, is between one, between regions? this is basically each dot. Sorry, let me just go back here. So this is run at uh, by the, each beta is by country, and then it's weight. It's it's That's just GDP. taking the average That's GDP. Mm -hmm. GDP. GDP per capita. GDP per capita. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um. And so if, if these are just the first one, the blue one, are just unweighted convergence regression, once we weight by population, we actually see that, uh, you know, like uh, it seems to, it's almost like a level effect. You see even less of this convergence and it starts even earlier. Uh, we, for the country, we have data before. You actually see there is some slope, but effectively uh, it's all like uh, driven but, uh, up. Mm -hmm. The question is, do we actually expect convergence? Because if you have a region where you know, everybody is a functioner, they will only produce non-traded goods. Is there any reason to believe that GDP per capita is going to converge with another region that could instead produce uh, different traded goods because it has... Uh, no, no, that, that's, a, that's a very good question, right? There is always like... A Hundred percent is like it. I guess that's a little bit where you know we're also going to. We expect convergence in one good aggregative uh, models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between regions, this has, this uh, shortcut is less justified than between countries. So extent regions are more special. Mm -hmm. The but 
the thing is that you know like uh, we shouldn't expect uh, i mean uh and some to some extent it's also part of the story right in the sense that uh, uh we were it seems to we were going at least some countries have shifted uh, in from a world in which there was uh, uh convergence a world there is uh, there, there is now not nowadays and we are saying that part of this is actually what if if we are working in some sectors that might uh, lead to some type of convergence to sectors actually relatively specialized I and mean, it's actually hard to you know like same, even if there are forces of diffusion or so on and so forth it doesn't really it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna drive you there that's part of the story in, in some sense so uh, should we expect or not convergence the question is like well it might depend uh, it depends on a little bit in, in what we think is actually well what the data are telling us it seems it might be a, a case of uh, what you're producing, like uh, what, you're, wh what the nature of the, the growth is in terms of the sector you are, you are into. Um, okay, so, but effectively here I'm just plotting averages, right? And so you might tell you, I'm sure there is a lot of heterogeneity, of course there is a lot of heterogeneity, it's like, uh, you know, what, who are these countries and so on and so forth. Uh, just to take some, you know, some some, uh, some, some stats, uh, effectively, just like we compared uh, this uh, beta, like from the beginning, the first one to the, towards the end, and say like, for how many countries do you actually see this beta uh, um, um, going uh, going positive? And it's 56% uh, of the countries. It's basically 19 over 34. It's uh, they are 77% of the GDP and the 69% of the population. So it seems to be driven mostly by. Uh, the, the you know like uh, the, the the richer uh, richer countries a little bit relatively large one okay and uh, the question is uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, who are these countries and uh, what does it mean and but before we go there let me just show you and confirm uh, what, what's happening because all of this picture we were li uh, leaving out Africa completely and so for the years we had starting 2004 on so it's just like the very last part of the data. We did this also of uh, this uh, economist uh, data that actually included uh, sub-Saharan Africa. And even there, <laughs> we are seeing uh, um, very little uh, to none uh, convergence. But if you believe in the, the Kuznets curve, then again, you observe divergence. If you take a country which is very poor, uh, GDP per capita is the same in all regions, maybe zero. And then uh, if, when it starts industrialization, industrializing, it won't industrialize everywhere. So uh, there will be a phase of divergence initially. Yes, so again, like, uh uh, of course, we cannot explain, you know, like uh, the idea is not to explain uh, like uh, country by country, like all the different stories, just like to kind of think whether there is a homogeneous story uh, that might at, at least explain uh, part uh, of what we are seeing uh, uh, in the data. But I, I understand your point. And just to tell you, you know, something else that's uh, still related to this uh, fact one. Some of this is like, okay, uh, you know, like if you're in a, um, in a solo model, then uh, you should not expect convergence, uh, uh, just unconditional convergence, but sh you can expect, you should expect conditional convergence, where conditional convergence is based on like on, uh, on uh, population uh, growth, education, and uh, uh, well, savings that we don't have here. And uh, effectively, once we condition uh, on population growth on the uh, on the left graph, you actually don't see uh, more convergence. If anything, you see even less. When we condition on education, you see a little bit more convergence uh, at the beginning, but again, uh, not much that explains uh, the, uh, the the data. Okay. Uh, ideally, we would have savings, but uh, we don't have that to be able to to check that too. Uh, Again, um, we did a bunch of robustness of this fact. You know, my all of this is, you know, we know that India and China have been growing uh, a lot, and it, was this all driven by India and China? The answer is no, uh, even if we wait for them. Uh, and wherever we could, so basically for, uh, um, for the US and India, we had uh, a real GDP per capita data, where, and we, we, we run this exercise for this country. Hopefully we can run more in the future. Even when you account for regional price differences, it doesn't explain uh, this fact. And we use the night lights data. With the night lights data, we actually find very similar uh, results. 
and uh, we did uh, a bunch of heterogeneity by OECD status and country size. It seems that uh, uh, this holds true uh, more for the richer countries and for the OECD uh, one. Uh, just to give you, I'm not, sorry, how much time do I have left? Okay. Uh, I'll go very quickly on this, but just, you know, like, what's the story uh, we are thinking of? Until now, I gave you averages, but again, like, not all countries uh, weigh the same also in terms of interest. And I think uh, India and China are not always, like, on top of our head when we think about growth in the last decades. Um, so if you think about, you know, GDP per capita of India and China relative to the U.S., overall, it has been growing, right? But if you think in terms of GDP per capita of India and China relative to the U.S., but split it by, you know, like uh, the size of GDP, uh, of a location, uh, these are regions, split it by the size of GDP, is you see that the growth has been, uh, uh, hasn't been the same um, everywhere, right? We see uh, growth being higher uh, in, 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 uh, in, the, in, in the ones that were already at the top the size of GDP per capita. Uh, in India, and uh, the second, for instance, the style uh, in China. And uh, when we actually look at the employment concentration in this uh, top two deciles region, both for India and China, what we see is that there has been an increase between, you see, 1918, 2009, 1980, 2004, where we have data for China. There has been a strong increase in the concentration of uh, um, service sector, but mostly it seems to be a lot of this uh, professional business service sector where actually its concentration has uh, grown the most. So somehow, to some extent, it seems to be the case that at least there is a, a correlation between this uh, location where, you know, like uh, uh, in India and China that have been growing, have kind of like uh, left apart the others, and, uh, but also they've been very concentrated in terms of, in, at least in relative terms, uh, for the uh, service sector, in particular the professional ones. There was a question there. Yes? Yeah. What do you know about like migration patterns? <laughs> but if there is migration from the, you know, you explicitly address equal weights, constant weights to all, you do that visually. Um, what if people actually migrate to the more successful regions? And then you could still get some compression um, within the country that could be difficult to uh, migration data within countries like this are extremely hard to get. We have some of these, and uh, we, we, with whatever we have, again, all bias for the richer uh, countries, we, we are trying to do some comp like a decomposition exercise. Uh, we have migration in the model, which is uh, part, I mean, one of the main channels to which uh, you know, there is this uh, labor um, move across locations, but data-wise, it's a, it's a big limitation. Sorry, Chad, I... I think we, yes, uh, we have them. Yeah, yeah. The lines are parallel. I don't think, uh, but yes, we have them. Okay, yes. I don't have migration here, because the population is the case that the rich region population is growing much faster. Uh, we actually did, uh, if you redo everything rather than when GDP per capita with the population, you find very similar, uh, um, very similar uh, results in the sense that population uh, is moving, like uh, is growing at least in the location that seems already to have, uh, uh, to already be more concentrated in terms of population. So it seems that both, in fact, when you look at a new condition for population growth, actually these results of convergence, they seem to be uh, giving even more divergence according to the direction of you know, this population growth leaning to already um, uh, high income, high GDP locations. Okay, um, so I, I'm officially late, but uh, um, just to, I think, I mean, this is kind of the most important part, but uh, if it, so what I show you until now, you know, just like what, uh, just pure data, what, what does it look like in terms of these uh, um, statistics? But how is this correlated with, you know, um, patterns of the, of the data that we think might explain part of this story? And so what we're plotting here is this, our um, within country beta convergence over uh, uh, beta over time, and then on the x-axis, by, by country, we are going to have, you know, for each country, we're going to have uh, several points in time, this uh, service uh, employment share. And uh, uh, 
uh, these estimates are all residualized of country fixed effect, right? Because countries may be different in many other dimensions. So we really wanted to, you know, think about this uh, uh, service share component. And you see there this uh, positive relationship. And you see also, if you plot on the right hand side, the uh, GDP per capita, you actually see also, again, all these are all residualized of this, uh, this positive relationship. So to some extent, there seems to be uh, this uh, a relationship between uh, this uh, service employment share, GDP per capita, and this, uh, in these patterns of uh, uh, regional convergence. We did these regressions because we wanted to check. We just plot this in a, in a regression version because we wanted to check, you know, like it just like, is any sector or like it's just services. And we, we, when we, you know, regress it on, um, Again, the dependent variable is always uh, within country beta convergence. When we regress it uh, on uh, manufacturing, and uh, you actually see the opposite, uh, uh, the opposite sign, it's negative relationship. When we regress it on both manufacturing and services, it's still to be the case. Actually, it's, it's a positive relationship with service. Not, it, just, it's, it seems to be more related to the nature of, uh, uh, of the service sector. So you are explaining the speed of convergence here. Exactly. And you tell us that uh, if there is more agriculture, you converge less fast. Uh, no, because it's, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Because the beta, when the beta becomes more positive, you, have, you, you converge less. Mm -hmm. So if two coefficients are negative, then services should be positive, no? But never makes sense. You cannot have a share in each sector having the, the same sign because they add up to one. Well, I mean, this, the last regression doesn't account for just like uh, uh, right, right, service right. and manufacturing, right? No, but right. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me that if I increase uh, uh, the share of manufacturing and the share of agriculture, I, I reduce the share of services? If you so agriculture, manufacturing, and service, right. yes, but this is like exploiting exploiting the variation over time and across uh, across countries, right? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, intuitively, it would be weird if you got if there is somewhere an explanation of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, if in that world, when I have more manufacturing, then beta <coughs> becomes more negative. And if when I have more agriculture, then beta becomes more negative. Then when I have more services, beta should become less negative. I don't think it's necessarily it's necessarily the case. We can discuss this. I think I'm a little bit yeah, short in time. Yeah, yeah. So perhaps we can discuss this uh, this later. You but you have trouble uh, writing a model where you know if a plus b equals one, then an increase in a has a positive effect on one variable and an increase in B also mm -hmm. has a positive effect on that variable. But if they sum up to one, if you increase one, you reduce the other. So mm -hmm. there must be some consistency. No? We, let's, uh, I guess we can discuss this later because I don't think this is the nature of uh, this exercise, but we can uh, talk later. Uh, just actually, this is also related to your previous question. Is like you know, like as conver as you know, like the, as inequality ended, so there was no reason to converge anymore. Actually, we still still see there is a lot of uh, uh, inequality left. Uh, you know, like still like this, we are plotting this regional inequality, basically the coefficient of variation of GDP, and you see that. Uh, there is seem like relatively large, and it's kind of like it's flattening out when you regress it uh, on the where the x on the x-axis you have the uh, service share and employment. Uh, just kind of uh, you know like uh, giving some extra um, uh, understanding of like uh, what is this within country uh, convergence? We're thinking of, this was all about GDP, but if you think about uh, skill or population, you actually see that when you think about skill. So basically education, you run exactly the same type of exercise, these results are even more striking. You see even less of this, uh, uh, you know, over time, this uh, clear pattern of education uh, not converging across, across locations. Now, last, last fact we want to point out, and this is uh, where we are still uh, collecting more data and uh, it, it's, uh, it needs more refinement. We are looking at this uh, regional concentration of services, right? 
And uh, the idea is that if you actually plot, you know, a share of, uh, in this case, uh, professional services um, in the top regions, in the bottom region, this is for the regions, uh, average region, okay? Um, we basically, for all these countries, we divided them not by country by country, but region by region. And we plot these regions in the bottom decile, in the top decile. And you see that if you take the, uh, the, the difference, you see that uh, uh, the concentration of these of the, of services, of these professional services, is actually uh, in, in the last decades, in the last couple of decades, it seemed to be kind of going up. And if you compare this, you know, it could be just everywhere, but if you compare it with the concentration in uh, agricultural manufacturing, it seems the concentration of services is the one that is uh, uh, going up the most. Um, again, this this fact we, are, we we still need some data refinement. So I, I hope to confirm it with you in a, in some months. But it seems to be the case. Now I have a few minutes left, so and um, you know, like I'm gonna just tell you about this one. That effectively everything I've told you was about uh, uh, service and about structural change. Not because we didn't think about other potential stories, but that you know, whenever we look at other stories. This, this service story, this service uh, employment and, and productivity growth, uh, it seems to be the one that has the biggest bite in the data compared to the others like uh, uh, trade, education, or, uh, or uh, migration, or, or some type even like a polit uh, political economy within the, within the country. Uh, I'm going to have just a few minutes to discuss, um, uh, to discuss the model. Um, so, the model effectively, the objective of this for now is basically to see, okay, can I, you know, a simple story, um, just like having a model of, a, a, the, the most basic model of structural change, very canonical, in which you have three sectors and you have a, a subsistence level in agriculture. So the economy, whenever it grows, shifts out of agriculture. And with a super canonical model of special equilibrium, which are the ones I'm more comfortable with in general, uh, which people move across locations, you have as many locations as you'd like. And the key here, the, the only piece we are adding here, given the piece of evidence we had so far, was basically to see like, if the service sector has this higher concentration force, this higher agglomeration force, okay? put together with these two canonical pieces, can we replicate what we have in the data? And how much this concentration of the service sector can, can explain of, uh, what we, of this fact of this decrease uh, in regional convergence? Again, I'm open to hear more stories. So this is what uh, we did so far. I'm just going to skip. This is just very canonical description of you know, like uh, 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 utility. And uh, same here. Basically, here the only uh, the key, the only little innovation is that this, this um, um, uh, uh, the productivity process for the economy, the activity growth process for the economy, depends on this exogenous rate, right? That depends uh, g that varies by sector, but also on this ex endogenous component that depends on on the population you have around. And so that you know, like if if there are more people in, uh, um, let's say, in Delhi. Uh, actually, that uh, that they will want to work more in uh, the service sector in Delhi because there is this endogenous productivity productivity process, and so that will push up service not just in Delhi but everywhere, and it will pull also more people in Delhi and potentially uh, putting this uh, uh, reducing this convergence. Uh, we, again, the, the, I think I'm uh, relatively out of time, so. We, the way we calibrated this, we thought uh, to just create a representative country, taking all the regions, dividing them in bottom, medium, and high region, and uh, basically like uh, um, uh, um, kind of like see if our uh, representative countries had to match our fact one, right? This pattern of just in the data of this decline in regional convergence or this stall in regional convergence. We, we basically um, internally calibrated the parameter we care the most was actually this agglomeration in services, but we calibrated pretty much everything. Um, yes, I'm out of time. Perfect. I think I'm pretty much. Uh, uh, Yep. Thank you.